Greetings Christian brothers and sisters and all Welcome to our Lord's Day before the Nativity Today we will observe the lighting of the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love In response of God's love for us, have your light your hymn love, voices in prayers, let us worship her. They call it to worship. O oh, come, let us adore the triumph, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, that all the men and women say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Our God reigns. We shall be glad and wait for his word. We now observe the lighting of the fourth candle, the candle of love. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. Today, we will light it and the candles of hope and peace again, as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises because he loves us. The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of love. God's love is perfect. It holds nothing back. God, in love, gives us everything we need to live a life of hope, peace, and joy. Mary, for you have found favor with God. 
and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and you will be called, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. May we said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to, to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, our oh Lord. We hear your angel Gabriel and witness the faith of Mary and her self-giving action spurred by love. Fill us with your love and light. Mary was a young, strong, spiritual woman. Even though her life was not easy, she heard God's voice and said yes. Her song was a prayer that could uplift those who were downtrodden. Her lyrics shattered the crowd and called the world to change. She would bear within her the promised child, Jesus, our gift of love. This Advent, may we respond with love to God's beckoning to us as well. Revealing God, visit us and fill us with your spirit of love. Bring your good news to life within us. Give us courage to carry your love into the hard places of this world. Amen. We now sing the hymn, Sing We the King Who is Coming to Be. Voices in Praise number 56.
Here we are before you on this day to give you praise, honor, and glory. We come recognizing that no one else deserves our praise but you alone. Let everyone who Lord this morning bow down before you, confessing that there is none like you. Creator of heaven and earth, blessed be your name. We love and glorify you, and our heart is filled with gratitude. Feel us today, we pray, with your Holy Spirit, and help us to find peace in the shadow of your wings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us in silence confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we bring our confessions to you and we pray for forgiveness. We have sinned against you and against our fellow brothers and sisters. Many times when we should show care and love, we did otherwise. Many times when we should be supportive to others, we pass them by. We therefore acknowledge the need of your pardon and the strength. Merciful God, pardon and forgive us. Loving God, we have failed many times without seeking strength from you. The good that we would do, we have not done. And the evil we would not do, we have done. We therefore acknowledge the need of your pardon and strength. Merciful God, forgive and fortify us. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be able to resist evil with good. Brothers and sisters in Christ, listen to the good news. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If we sincerely confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are forgiven. And let your response be, Amen. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Inviting now Sister Alicia still to lead us in prayer and worship. He came to set the captive free, and we are free this morning to worship him. So I invite you to stand as we give him all the praise and glory as free people of God.
and magnify your holy name, for it to proclaim your word of salvation to all everywhere. We thank you that someone listening today will make a new commitment to live a life pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we approach to the ministry of the word, we invite you to sing along with us the hymn Come Divine Interpreter, Voices in Praise, number 146. Trust and obedience are two important gifts we need 
in our Christian job. God wants us to be constant in our faith because He too trusts us as human beings. Whenever we consider the, the term faith, we are referred to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 because the writer does something wonderful in defining, in defining faith the way he does. He conquers that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. This is what any coach does. He or she inspires he or her athletes by making them watching videos of great football or basketball plays over and over again. At the end of the day, they become so motivated and trust that they too can do as great as anyone else. In the Old Testament section of the Bible, God posted his vision for salvation through the prophet Isaiah. This vision, Paul spoke of it in Romans chapter 1 verse 2 saying that there would come a Messiah to be the Savior of the world. And the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 1 from verse 26 describes in part how this took place. From verse 26 I read, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said, Greetings favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his word and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conserve in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. No wonder, my brothers and sisters, Mary was confused and disturbed. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, she displayed a trusting attitude when she said, I am a servant of the Lord. Let this happen, as you say. Then the angel left. Two important lessons we can learn from this passage. One, in the midst of uncertainty, God appears. Mary was confused and God met her in her confusion. We are living in a world of confusion where evil is seen as good, darkness is viewed as light, and wrong is taken for, for right. But God is not a confusing God. He knows what He is doing and where He is heading. We can trust Him. And the second lesson is this. You don't have to understand before you trust the Lord. Mary displayed the perfect attitude. Though she was confused and disturbed, but she confessed, I am a servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me, as you say. How often does your attitude fail you? How often you thought you could go ahead of God and follow your own direction? How often you thought that you could reach faster than God or do it faster than Him? No, you can't. David says in Psalm 27 verse 14, Wait unto the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage with it. 
you are listening to this message right now you may be going through some difficult times having no clue of how to get out it looks so confusing to you and you feel like giving up what do you do would you say as Mary did I am a servant of the Lord let it be according to his will you may be waiting for God to answer a particular request of yours let me tell you do not give up waiting confess rather in your heart say I am a servant of the Lord he knows my need let it be according to his will you may be living with fear fear of being infected by the coronavirus fear of being diagnosed with cancer following some severe pains in your body you are not alone but your prayers your attitude can make a difference say lord you know my fears you know my anxiety you know my pain and everything else about me have your way this journey we are a part of is a journey of faith joseph and mary would not have been able to complete the law of the journey without trust and belief this reminds me of the hymn from the voices and prayers number 278 when we walk with the lord in the light of his word what a good we share on his way trust and obey in Isaiah chapter 7 verse verses 10 through to 16 Ahaz was the king of Judah he felt threatened by raising of Aram and Pekah of Israel Ahaz was so afraid of them and what God did he called Isaiah and sent him to assure Ahaz that he had nothing to fear because Raising and bigger would fail in their attempt to attack Jerusalem. But Ahaz did not trust in God's promises. Isaiah warned Ahaz and said to him in verse 9 of Isaiah chapter 7 If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. And so I say, brothers and sisters in Christ, until except you believe, until you believe, you shall not see the promise of God come to pass. You need to know and believe that the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. One more thing I want you to understand as we make our journey of faith is that this gift of faith and trust works sometimes with our character, our personality. Joseph, as described in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 19, was a righteous man, a man of integrity, who did not want to expose Mary to public disgrace but had in mind to divorce her quietly. Your character, your personality, God, God can work with it to take you to a high level of understanding, to a comforted spirit and mind. If Joseph was not a righteous man and God's spirit did not testify to his spirit, Joseph would have gone crazy making noise all over the place but praise be to god whose grace and love endures forever the lord makes the way open to the righteous men and women he builds them up in such a way they live humble patient and trusted as christians exposed to all sorts of the situations in life we can do nothing except to trust the Lord, even though we do not understand what God is doing, how and when things will happen. 
we are living in a changing world. Everything seems to be going upside down. Light is now darkness. Lie is truth. No is yes. Day is night. Man is woman. Normal is abnormal. What do we do? How do we respond? Jesus told the disciples in the means of all of this to stay vigilant. Stay vigilant and pray that no one deceives you. Remain attached to the Lord and trust in his promises. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 11 Jesus says, I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have that no one takes your vow. This is the Lord's promise. He is coming back. It may sound cliche, but he is coming back. No one knows when, even the angels of God, but he is coming back. If God made it from the Old Testament to the New Testament, he will make it also from the New Testament to the second return of Christ. It doesn't matter whether you and me will see it or not. But we trust him and he is a faithful promise keeping God and so I invite you my brothers and sisters to come out of your doubt out of your fears out of your confusion to trust in the promise of the Lord you are servants of the living God the enemy can only attempt to make you believe that he won't help, but don't listen to the voice of the enemy. Listen to the voice of the Holy One, the Well One, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the most faithful, promise-keeping God. Stay attached to him and see how his promises in your life will come to pass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word reminding us that we do not need to understand to believe in your promise. Teach us today how to lean upon you when we are faced with difficult challenges. Today we thank you for Mary and Joseph and the faith they kept until the birth of the child who was meant to be the savior of the world. Thank you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you in response to the word of God to sing this beautiful hymn standing on the promises of God. Voices in Grace number 207A.
And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore.